Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. to 1975. Game 502, Yankees at Red Sox. Welcome back, baseball fans. 1972-75, carryover league. We are continuing in the race of the pennant um, in the America League East, a battle of third and fourth place teams a year ago. Uh, not a year ago, presently. The Yankees and the Red Sox in an inauspicious era for them. Um, let's just go right to the needs and where the standings are before we go into what's happened in the series thus far. Um, Baltimore in the American League East was a game and a half behind Toronto. Then finally figured out who they were and, who, and Toronto figured out who they weren't. And Baltimore took five out of six of the Blue Jays, but they were all very close games in heartbreaking fashion to Cinderella. She had a really bad date. So Baltimore took, seemed to take control of first place, the American League East. And we have the Yankees and Red Sox. The Yankees find themselves three and a half games back. And the way this works is Boston swept them four straight when they met earlier. The Yankees had home field as well. <laughs> So now Boston has home field. They have a four-game tiebreaker. With seven games to play and three and a half back, if the Yankees say were to win five of seven, they'd still be a half game back, and Boston would still have a tiebreaker. Nope. The Yankees got to win six out of seven. Ouch. Yep. Yeah. Ouch. Well, you know, with the Yankees, it's their story being bad, and that's fine. But the Red Sox had their own special torment here. Let's look at the overall standings in the American League East. Uh, before, the, before everybody convened for the All-Star break, the uh, Red Sox were two and a half games ahead of everybody, and uh, well, the commissioner made a call and said, hey, Boston, uh, you are, you're winning. You're, you're going to win the American League East. We're just going to send you the application. Just fill it out and mail it back to us. And, and the Red Sox said, what, what, what do we do? What, 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 what are we supposed to do? You say we won what? What do we, what, what, what do we win? What, what do you want me to... Where do, I, do I need a, a blue ink or black ink? What do I do to sign? And then the commissioner's office said, never mind, just, just keep playing baseball. Just keep playing baseball. We'll see what happens. At which point, uh, the Red Sox lost to those Blue Jays four straight, scoring four runs in four games, and the Blue Jays having four consecutive complete games. That same Blue Jay team that I said just lost five of six. So then we called down to Baltimore, and they were uh, getting their fishing lures together and the weights and the uh, the rod and reel. Uh, and they said, "Hey, hey, hey, you guys! I think you're going to the playoffs again." And the Orioles, like Brooks Robinson and you know Bobby Gritch and Jim Palmer, they're looking at each other and goes, "No, we got a fishing trip. We're done. We're toast. We are done. We're gone." And uh, I said, no, no, I think you're going to the playoffs again, guys. <sighs> Not another playoff trip. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> so, anyway, we've had one game of Red Sox and Yankees. And here it is. Game one. Mel Stoudemire versus Bill Lee. And if you're expecting inept play, you get it. You get a Cecil Cooper homer, which is nice, and he's been the best Red Sox in a platoon situation. Doesn't play much versus lefties, which is disappointing, but solo shot. Okay. Seventh inning, the, the Yankees have done nothing again. One of the worst offenses in the league. Mercer singles, then Bill Lee gets a ground ball double play hit back to him, which he kicks around. Then he walks a guy, a ground out, a walk, and then he gives up a two-run single to Stick Michael. And now, the Red Sox are losing this game 3-1. to one. Hey, don't worry. The Yankees will give it right back. After a strikeout, fly ball to center fielder Bobby Mercer, who's a 1-E3 in center field. Nope. No. No, can't catch it. E3 center fielder? No. Nope. Can't do it. 
then a single ground out, a walk, and a double, and we're tied. Three, three to three. Eleventh inning, twelfth inning, as a matter of fact. Uh, Lenny McDaniel and Ted Abernathy throw a couple scoreless innings. Moret comes in, throws a scoreless twelfth, bottom of the twelfth. After an out, Yastrzemski walk, Fisk singles. And then Fred Lynn, not on his own card, even though he's the MVP, 75 card, off of the Lindy McDaniel card gets the RBI single for the rookie. Best moment of the year for him, who's had a dreadful rookie campaign in this revision. He's hitting like 220. Tell me what happens if uh, Fred Lynn hits 220 for the 75 Red Sox. We have in a Boston Cincinnati World Series. So that's the slump that Freddie is in this year, though he got a victory today for his Red Sox. They win game one, four to three, which means the Yankees would have, would have to beat the Red Sox six in a row. Talk about Curse the Bambino. That would be a, a sight. Yankees, Red Sox, game two, Fenway Park. Oh, the pitching matchup just gets even better for the Yankees. They'll trot their worst pitcher out there, Mike Kekich, 72 10 game winner, 370 ERA, 175 innings pitched. His best year, arguably. I'm putting up my middle and uh, index finger in air quotes uh, for my Kekich. And for the Red Sox, it's Louis Tiant, arguably, I'm going to put the air quotes up again. Best season of his career, 1972. 15 and 6 with a 191 ERA and 179 innings just brutalizes right handed batters. Yankees, Red Sox, Fenway Park. They got the brooms out in Fenway for a game two of a best of seven series. <laughs> Let's get started. Leading off for the Yanks, it'll be Roy White. 1 4 flies to right. Chris Chambliss, 65, flies to center. And Bobby Mercer, 56, second X. Doug Griffin's a 1 19, and he kicks the ground ball. So much for being a 1. We have a lot of 1s in, the, in, the, in this game, as a matter of fact. Thurman Munson, 52, pops to third. The Yankees actually have Elliott Maddox, a 1 on the bench. Munson's a 1 catcher. Mercer's a 1 in center. Then you got. Fisk is a one. Freddie Lynn's a one. Dwight Evans is a one. Doug Griffin's a one. Yastrzemski should be a one, but he's not. Rick Miller's a one on the bench. But we have had errors determining the last couple games. The last game. Tommy Harper leading off for Boston. 5-12 pitcher. Yastrzemski 1-8. Homer 1-7 fly ball. And Yastrzemski... Hits a home run, and Boston is officially 24 outs away from finally burying the New York Yankees. Carlton Fisk, 2-7, K. Dwight Evans, 68, walks. Enrico Petroselli, 56, is a K. Plus, you could also say that Boston would play a season undefeated versus the Yankees, beating them every single time. So even though... It's kind of a dour forecast. It is some incredible bragging rights in the rivalry. Gene Locklear leads off in the second. 49. Walk. Bernie Allen. 410. Center X. Uh, this is Freddy. He's a 1 8. Alomar. 43. First X. This is. Yeah, it's a 2 e 15. Should be a 1, but. It is what it is. It's also a double play in this case. Bottom of the second. Freddie Lynn. 48. Triple one of five. Base hit. Josephson. Dwayne, comma. One eight to K. Doug Griffin. Two eight. Single to left field. Freddie can run. And you got noodle arm Roy White in left field. He'll go coast to coast with one out. The Yankees will bring the infield up already down a run. Rick Burleson, 38 for Rick. Lefty question mark. Again, the noodle arm, so Lynn will tag up. And he scores. Tommy Harper. 6'10. Third X. This is Nettles. He should be a one as well, but he's not. He's a 2 e 22. And he kicked that ground ball. 
We have two on for Yastrzemski. 38, single one is six. He can't get that one. Oh, it's two nothing. Top of the third, Greg Nettles, 53. Right X, this is Dwight Evans, a one. Stick Michael, 4-4. Four, four. Homer, 1-8, double the rest. That, of course, is a single. He doesn't have power. None, actually, in 190 plate appearances. Back up top to Roy White. 67, a K. And Chambliss, 68. Flies to a center field. Bottom of the third. Fisk. 612, center. Dwight Evans, 2 4, short. Rico Petroselli, 67, a walk. Fred Lynn, 2 3, rolls to short. Well, can't get just put men on every inning. Yeah, it's just a 2 0 game. In the fourth, Bobby Mercer. 2 3, pops to second. Munson, 66, left. Locklear, 34, first. Bottom of the fourth. Dwayne Josephson, 42, center. Doug Griffin, 210, homer, 1 to 8, fly ball, missed it. And Burleson, 1 7, Ks. The Orioles, you know, that fishing trip they had booked, they chartered a yacht somewhere. Uh, they mailed all that information to the Yankees and said, hey, uh, don't want to waste it. Uh, you guys aren't going anywhere. I think, yeah, you can, you can, we'll sell it to you. So, Bernie Allen, 56, second X. Griffin again. The 1 19, makes the play. Alomar, 35, triple 1 to 3, base hit. Greg Nettles, 2 5, a double play. No, that's a fielder's choice. And with two outs, stick Michael, 2 11. Third base and an injury. Uh, we'll put. We uh, need a new shortstop. I don't think we have one. Oh, Bernie Allen could play second, and Sandy Alomar could play short. That'll be fun. So we'll put uh, Elliot Maddox in that spot to play outfield, and uh, we'll move one of the outfielders to DH. We'll move Lucklear to DH, and the merry-go-round will be complete. Okay, Yankees doing their part. Two nothing deficit for them. Bottom of the fifth, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. If you guys got a train to catch or something like that, better be on the platform. This thing's moving briskly. We'll get you out of here quick. If you got to like to mow a lawn or clean out some rain gutters or something like that to do today, I don't think this game's going very much further. Tommy, this series going very much further. Tommy Harper, 1-6. Okay. Yastrzemski, 412 center. Fisk, 37 Ks. Sixth inning. We got Roy White, 1 5. There's a walk. You want to run off of <laughs> the minus three armor Fisk? It's the last chance you're probably going to have this year to steal a base. Why don't you get some exercise? He's going to try a stolen base, and it's close, but he's going to be out. Yep. Minus three arm Fisk. Thank you very much. Chambliss, 37. Flies the right. Bobby Mercer, 2-7. Triple 1-7. Double. A double for Bobby. Uh, Munson with a runner at second and two outs. 2-9. Two grounds to third. Bottom of the sixth. Dwight Evans, 42. Center. Rico Petroselli, 39 left. Fred Lynn, 2-7-K. Well, Kekic has done his part, man. He got you through six. Giving up a couple runs. Can't ask for more than that, really. Um, yeah. So he'll probably be gone as we go to the seventh. Uh, Gene Locklear leads off. 3-6, single one of 15. He gets it. Now you got the dangerous Bernie Allen. 49 off Tian is a walk. Oh, boy, Boston. Here we go. Two on, nobody out. Sandy Alomar. 68, center. Greg Nettles, 55, is another walk. Bases are loaded, one out. You do have a 2 nothing lead. Elliot Maddox, you're going to play it back, hope for an inning-ending double play. Here's the pitch to Elliot. 64, short X. Now, this is going to be Burleson, but I caution, he's not that superstar defensive player quite yet. He's a 3-E31 at shortstop, a 3. And they get a fielder's choice out of it. 
I'll score a run. Make it two to one. Could not convert the throw over to first in time. So now we've got runners on the corners with two outs. And it's back up top to Roy White. 37 is another ball four. So it's up to Chris Chambliss now. Let's take a look. This was the Yankee All-Star. Because somebody had to go. And Chris had a reasonable first half. Uh, he's a 304 hitter on a strat card. He hit 293, which is only 10 points or 11 points worse, which is good for this team. Nine homers and about 580 plate appearances. I think it's the only time he hit 300 in a Yankee uniform, maybe, in the year of 75. Here's the pitch to Chris Chambliss. 1-4 grounds to second base. Stretch time here at Fenway Park. We are enjoying Boston Legends Aerosmith. Here it is. Oops. With the Rocks LP of 1975. 76, actually. They actually put two records out in the same year. Uh, Rocks featuring Last Child, Back in the Saddle, Nobody's Fault. I think it's one of their best records, really. Short record, 34 minutes. Aerosmith rocks. Well, we knew that. But he, there they are. Five rocks on stage. Okay. Bottom of the seventh inning. The thing about the series is uh, the Yankees have a great opportunity to go on a winning streak and really get Boston to sink below 500, damaging their chances at a playoff spot. The Red Sox want to win this game right here and now and finish the series two games over 500. So, yeah, it's very important to Boston to win this game. And they have a 2-1 lead. In the bottom of the seventh, we're going to get rid of Kekic. It's only going to get worse from here. And we're going to go to Fred Bean in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees boast, actually, one of the best bullpens in the sport. Wasted. You got Sparky Lyle and Fred Bean with sub-2 ERAs. Lindy McDaniel, 281. Luke Walker, 339. Fred Bean, probably his best year in a Yankee uniform in 73. 6 and 0, 168 ERA in 91 innings. Heck of a card. Underused, as you can imagine, for a losing team. You know, if they were a winning team, they'd be overused because they'd be, show their excellence. So they haven't slumped. It's the offense that's been putrid. So, bottom of the seventh, we'll lift Dwayne Josephs in the DH for a pinch hitter, and that will be Cecil Cooper to a rousing ovation here in Fenway. He's been the best Red Sox this year. Probably should have gone to the All-Star game. Um, in 75, he hits 311. Third best average on that squad. You know, you had Lynn and uh, Fisk both hitting 331, I believe. And then uh, Cooper. Um... They just have him in a platoon at DH. Probably could play versus lefties. He's decent. But anyway, here is the pitch to Cecil Cooper. 411, first C. Number 8 hitter, Doug Griffin. 48 is a walk. C stealer. Burleson's going to do a little hit and run here. Runner has to steal against the Munson arm. That's not going to work. Yeah, that's another call it stealing. And now Burleson will sing away. 67. Another ugly <laughs> for these two squads. 2-1 two, into the eighth after the Burleson strikeout. Bobby Mercer. Is this the final at-bat of the year for, for Bobby? And this is the final at-bat for his 72 card where he hits 33 homers and 292. Let's take a look at it just in case. Bobby Mercer. What a great... Didn't go to the All-Star game, which was news. Had been to like the last three or four as a Yankee representative. In a bad era. In a lonely, weak era for the Yankees. Team being sold, stadium renovation, all that sort of stuff. The Gene Locke Lear, Bobby Bonds phase of the Yankees. Mercer, though, 33 homers, 30 doubles, 63 walks, a 292 average in this card of 1972. Leading off the top of the eighth against Tiant. Here's the pitch. 67, and that is a strikeout. Now you got Munson. 63, pitcher X. Tiante, El Tiante is an E8 pitcher. 
And he makes the play on the 19 there. And it is. Let's take a look at Gene Locklear. Last time we're going to see these goons. Well, not really, because it's a 75 card. Locklear, 321 average and 75 for the Padres. Then he went to the Yankees. Then he went to Japan. He was one of the first you know, American players to perform decently overseas, or so it seems. And then oh, there was a long parade after him. Here's the pitch to Locklear. 111, he pops the third. Uh, Fred Bean, or do we go to... Oh, let's go to uh, Sparky Lyle. Um, this seems like the, the Yankees aren't really into this thing, it, it would seem. They probably didn't want that run in the top of the seventh. They want to go fishing with Baltimore's attractive offer. Sparky Lyle will come on in the eighth. 72 is his first year out of Boston with the Yankees with a 192 year eight, 108 innings. One of his best years. Probably as good as a Cy Young year in that year where he won 13 games. 76, 77 maybe. Anyway, he'll face Tommy Harper in the top of the eighth, bottom of the eighth. 6-12 center. Yastrzemski, 49, second X. New second baseman Bernie Allen's a 4-E30 because of that injury to stick Michael. But he makes the play. And with two outs, Carlton Fisk. 110, Fisk, single one to 13. Hits the 13. And it'll be Dewey Evans. 38 is a grounder to third. Well, ninth inning, Boston can improve their defense even more with Rick Miller. Going in the left field where Tommy Harper was. So Boston can boast all ones in their outfield with minus two, minus three, and minus three arms. That's pretty remarkable, really. They got a one catcher, they got a one second baseman. Petroselli's a two at third, and Yaz a two at first. This is one of the best defenses in the sport. As we go to the ninth, two one, El Teante is a starter nine, but he's got to deal with three straight left-handed batters. He's going for the CG. They do have Roger Moret, Ted Abernathy in their bullpen. They've been kind of this year. So leading off in the top of the ninth inning is Bernie Allen. 63, short X. Burleson is a 3E31, and he makes the play. Can they finish this thing? It'd be pretty remarkable. Sandy Alomar. 2-5 for Alomar is a grounder to first. And with two outs, the Yankee season is in the hands of Greg Nettles. Let's take a look at him. Uh, this is a 72 Cleveland card. We kept it instead of the years that followed in New York where his range got worse. Then it gets a lot better. And he's a 1 um, in 76. And he leads the league, American League in home runs in 76. So we're going to switch to that card next year. But right now, does Greg Nettles want to go fishing or not? We'll find out. Here's the pitch to Greg Nettles. 64 off Tion is catcher's card. The 1 E6... Carlton Fisk, do you want to sweep your uh, rival New York Yankees? And the answer is, of course he does. And that is the end of the game and the end of the Yankees' dreadful season. And the Red Sox, they go, they go where's that paper? Where's that pa I signed where? I just won the division. Where's that paper I signed? No, 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 no. That, that offer, yeah, that, yeah, you, you kind of missed that offer but uh, you know you still can do it you can still win this division but we're not just going to hand it to you anymore uh, yeah we'll go right to the post game here uh, Tion it was four hits and five walks in the run complete game Sparky Law gave up a hit uh, Mr. Fred Bean a walk and a K and a call it stealing uh, Kekic hey decent three hits two runs what do you want what more do you want you know, that's not bad. Walk two, struck out seven. <laughs> that could be uh, Kekic's best stat line ever in a losing cause to end the Yankee season, oddly enough. Um, I got to credit this to Maddox, not Michael. There we go. 109, 0, 108, 2, 4, 1, 4. 
The teams combine for eight hits. Combine for eight hits at Fenway Park. Five two three eight three eight five two. What's it all mean? It's a bad day. Well, it's it's kind of an unfortunate day for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays as they have now fallen from first to third place. We'll we'll see. The Yankees got what they wanted. They wanted a trip out of this season and for everybody to forget about them. They are officially the second team eliminated. And they may, and I believe they do, they will finish worse than the Florida Marlins, who was, was eliminated yesterday. So that is game 502. The Red Sox find them back at 14 and 12. Yankees 9 and 18. In a league that is hitting 261 with a 385 ERA. That's the league numbers. Let's see what their numbers are. The Red Sox 14 and 12. They're hitting 239. Boston Red Sox 239, but they got a 325 ERA. Like I said, I mean they've had great pitching. They pitched well against the Blue Jays, obviously in this series. Last six starts have all been quality starts well beyond that for this Boston rotation. But the offense has been sick. Freddie Lynn. Well, Fred Lynn's got his average up to about 270 now. That's not bad. He's up to 275. That's not bad as it once was. Yaz is around 265. Fisk has been pretty awful, though. Yeah. Uh, Carlton Fisk is one homer this year, by the way. Fisk is hitting 217 with a homer. I mean, yeah, you have too many guys like that on the same team at the same time, you're not going to do much. And Boston is fortunate, very fortunate, to be two games and 500 and still very much alive in a watered-down American League East. And then the uh, Yankees, oh boy. This disaster is 9-18. and 18. One of the worst Yankee seasons I can ever recall, regardless of the era that you play in. Normally, the Yankees still put good quality teams together. Uh, 243 and 335. Pretty comparable statistics to Boston. So let's look at, look at net runs. Boston scored 98 runs, gave up 102, minus 4. The Yankees have scored 91 runs, gave up 106. That's negative 17. Oh, yeah. The Yankees did lose a lot of nail biters. You saw them lose an extra inning game one. So how did Bobby Mercer's final season go with that particular card? 250, 25 for 100. How about Mr. Munson? 25 for 108. Mr. Nettles, 22 for 102. Oh, ouch. Uh, Chambliss finishes 30 for 108. Uh, I guess he'll claim the most viable Yankee trophy with a 278 average and two home runs. No Yankee had three. Yeah, a couple of home runs. They lead the club in homers. Yeah. And when we look at the overall stats, we're going to do a sort of this division as this round is over for this particular division, at least. As it is um, in the National League East, both Easts are over presently. So the American League East, there's Baltimore. Um... A game and a half ahead of the Red Sox with the Blue Jays two and a half back. But this is a real sad story because the Blue Jays were really uh, with a fictional team and roster with players taken off of other teams' rosters. They were four over 500 at 15 and 11 looking like they were going to win this division. And now, now they're going to have a hard time um, making it to the playoffs. That's a real shame. Now over in the National League East, by the way, Mets have taken care of business while the rest of this division is floundering. Not so much in the East. Yankees are toast. We'll do an elimination video of them for tomorrow. Boston at 14 and 12. Uh, they, of course, will get a great draw. They'll draw the third place team in the American League West, which could be either the Mariners or the Angels. So that's a way to get healthy. So after Boston uh, blew the application for division title before they played Toronto, they now re-emerge from that debacle with two straight wins over the Yankees and potentially more wins over one of these sorry teams. 
So it's very plausible for the Red Sox to slip in as the number six seed. Uh, they're going to be battling with an Expo team that's actually pretty good. Possibly the Blue Jays if they get hot, though they may have shot their wad. Of course, the Blue Jays have the tiebreaker over the Red Sox, something to keep in mind. Looks like the Royals and White Sox are both going to the playoffs. And the Rangers out west, I'm not sure what we're going to get out of these guys. They have notable weaknesses on a team that's overachieved at this point. So yeah, the door's still open for the Red Sox. Break up them. They do get another sweep in the positive direction this time. They sweep the Yankees for this series and for this season, beating them six games in a row in the 72-75 Carryover League. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.